I've had several requests from people asking me how I set up my feeders for my snakes. I use only frozen thawed feeders, basically because they've confirmed that live rodents carry the virus that um, causes inclusion body disease in snakes and it's fatal for the snakes and it's a very painful and sad death. There's no treatment, no cure for it, so I refuse to use life feeders. It's a big topic. There's always going to be a debate about it, but, you know, I figure if you really care about your animals, why take the risk if you don't have to? It's really not that hard to switch them over. But I start all my feeders out in like a moderate warm water temperature. I slow thaw them, and I keep gradually increasing the water temperature. Because I found if you throw them into boiling hot water, it breaks down the tissue and it makes them a lot more likely to explode when the snake strikes at them. So if you start off with lower grade temps to thaw them out, you know, like a medium temp, and you keep graduating it until it's a hotter temp, so it's completely thawed all the way through, then you don't have all that tissue breakdown, so when the snake strikes it, it doesn't explode your feeder. She's sitting here waiting for a second one. So we'll try it. And you got to get back from the top. You know we don't do that. I won't open an enclosure if the snake's right up at the top because they can pop out and hit you in the face. That's another precaution I've learned over the years. Don't trust them to not come out and hit you in the face. You have to be careful when you work with snakes. You really do because almost every bite a person gets is because of their own lack of observation and not paying attention to what they're doing. But open her top. She's going to come right up because she knows I'm feeding today. Bang! Just like that. She came right up out of the top of the tank and snatched it right out of the tongue. So that's why you don't put your face up in front of them when you're feeding. If my face had been closer, she probably would have hit my face instead of hitting her feeder. It, 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 there are a lot of little things you can do to prevent bad things from happening and if you don't then it reflects poorly on people that do keep snakes and do it properly so you have to learn to pay attention to what you're doing and you know I hate to say be careful all the time but technically that's what you have to do to protect yourself if you want to do it right and you don't want to give the hobby a bad name then you have to be a responsible keeper and to do that you have to be very cautious about what you do and you have to do everything properly so you don't get hurt. So you don't have to deal with people talking more negative things about snakes because someone made a mistake. That's why I show people what feeding aggression consists of. Now she's in feeding mode. Some snakes take them two or three hours to come out of that mode. Uh, so they stop being so aggressive, but watch. That's feeding aggression. That's when you stand a chance of getting bit. So that's when you have to be very careful. You want some dinner? Want dinner? That'll get you bit right there if you put your hand in there. But that's feeding aggression. She knows there's more because she's feeding today, so she's waiting for another one. But that's when they're not, you know, they can't always tell the difference in your hand and the feeders temperatures and whatever is the warmest is going to be a target. Oh my big job. Don't unhinge. You're not done eating. The misconception about snakes, it, it just boggles my mind. You know, snakes are just as much individuals as people are. They have their likes and dislikes and they're not all the same. They have their triggers. They'll set off an aggressive or defensive mode. They have different things that set them into a calm, relaxed mode. They have to be treated just like people should be treating each other, ads should be, because they don't, but snakes are just as much an individual as people are. You know, there, there's some things that they just don't like, and if you know they don't like it, try to avoid putting, them in, putting the snake in a situation that has to cope with it, because that's stressful for the snake. You learn in time working with them how to read their body language so you know what sets them off and what calms them down. It's, it's a learned experience. You make a lot of mistakes in the process of learning, but if you don't make a mistake and learn anything from it, then it was a waste of your time and you accomplished nothing. 
A point that I make to people all the time is that a lot don't understand why I don't take my snakes out of their enclosures to feed them. There are basically two important reasons why I don't, because many snakes will stay in that feeding aggression mode for up to two hours, some even longer, after you're done feeding them. And they'll always pop at something that's warm, thinking they're going to get more. So my number one rule is all my snakes eat in their enclosures. That's why I hook train them, so they know when I open the top it's not always going to be food coming toward them. If they get a tap by the hook, then they know that it's me, and I'm planning to reach in, and then they back off. But the thing with that is, you just, you know, it, it's a personal choice. But to me, it just doesn't make sense to feed a snake outside of its enclosure. You're taking a risk when you, especially a big constrictor, you're really taking a big risk when you reach in to lift that snake up to take it out and put it back in its enclosure because it's still in feeding mode and it's still a very aggressive animal because it thinks it's going to be eating more. So I don't feed my snakes outside the enclosure for that reason. Another reason is because if they've just eaten a big meal, if they've just had a big meal and you're picking them up and handling them, not only are they still in feeding mode and they still have that natural feeding aggression, but you're also stressing them out because of the simple fact that they just ate. So personally, I just will not feed my snakes outside of their enclosures. There's no reason why. It's a lot easier to hook train them so you don't have to move them around after they've eaten a big meal and upset them and stress them out. And it really reduces the risk to you if you're not having to pick them up and move them. I mean, I've done it with my big snakes before, but why take extra steps that set you up for a bad situation if you really don't need to? That, that's just my philosophy, and there's a reason why you really need to be setting yourself up for a bite and stressing your snake out by handling it immediately after it's eating. So, yeah, it's just my... I've learned it through, um, well, actually in April will be 52 years I've raised snakes, but it, it makes no sense to take them out of their enclosures to feed them because you're just stressing them out and you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position to get bit. You really don't want to do that with big constrictors. That's definitely not on the list of to-dos if you want to keep your skin on your arms or your face. But just, you know, just some tips I found over the years that works out better for you. It's less stressful, stressful for you. And it causes the snake a lot, a lot less stress. I can't talk today. It's raining out and it's dreary and miserable. But yeah, you know, why do you want to stress your snake out? Why do you want to set yourself up to get bit? Those are things you have to ask yourself. If you can avoid those two situations, then perhaps you should. You know better now you got a full belly. You're all stretched out. There's something a lot of people don't realize about carpet pythons, Morelia, is that they're semi-arboreals, which means they like to climb and they like to be on the ground. And they have a prehensile tail, a little skinny tail there, which they can grasp with. That keeps them from falling. It secures them and they feel more secure by using their prehensile tail. But I've seen a lot of people complain that their carpet pythons were very nippy and bitey. And oddly enough, the ones that are complaining about that are usually people that keep them on the ground all the time and don't provide a perch for them. So it's important to them to be able to be up in the air, especially when they're feeding because it's a natural feeding posture for them to, like the arboreals, to hang from a branch and strike down at their food and then coil it up and wrap it and pull it into their mouths. So it's easier for them if you can give them a perch stresses them out a lot less and it's more of a natural posture for them when they're eating but I tell people this a lot your snake isn't mean it's just not comfortable in its environment and that's a problem a lot of people have is they don't realize it it's their own fault their snake is nippy because you're not setting up the enclosure to suit the snake you know it doesn't have to be fancy it doesn't have to be beautiful you don't have to spend a fortune on it but they need to be comfortable in their environment. And if they're not, you're gonna end up having to deal with the consequences. 
But you know, anybody that raises a carpet python, I suggest you have a perch that they can get up on because that's their natural position and posture. Now see, she's still in feeding aggression. She's watching every move I make. Even though she's stretched out and she's ready to digest her food, she's still watching me. Watch. Now, if I were to reach in there now, even though I'm done feeding her and pick her up to move her into another, to move her back into her closure, if she wasn't a tote, she'd bite me. That's it, straight up. No way around it. 